Hi, this is Ian Dunlop from OEFUN. Uh, you're watching a tutorial video for our Unity package Retina Pro for NGUI. This package makes it really easy to manage your art files and atlases across multiple screen sizes, um, for instance, uh, like an iPhone or iPad. This video assumes that you have a reasonable understanding of NGUI and you're familiar with setting up sprite and button widgets. I'm going to show you how to set up a simple scene using the example assets that are part of the package. This video does not cover all of the ways you could conceivably create art files for each screen size. That's quite a complicated subject and um, it's, it's really beyond the scope of this video. Uh, personally, I create um, source artwork at iPad retina size and then I have scripts uh, using image magic that basically crop if needed and scale down from there. However, there are, there are trade-offs with that approach. To start with, I've already set up NGUI and the Retina Pro packages. I've also deleted the Retina Pro data text file uh, so I can show you how it's configured from scratch. And then lastly, I've switched uh, to the iOS player and uh, this allows me to choose uh, iOS screen resolution you know like iPad or um, iPhone retina etc. It should be noted that there is nothing preventing this working for Android devices um, unfortunately that is uh, so I don't have the resources uh, to fully test that. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is the um, Retina Pro Windows. So once uh, Retina Pro is installed, if you go to uh, Window, uh, Retina Pro, there are three views, um, Preview, Atlases and Devices. The whole concept of Retina Pro is you add a device for every screen resolution that you're supporting and then you add your atlases as normal. So let me uh, take you through each part. First of all, devices. The first thing to do is, we're, for this uh, example, is we're gonna create devices for uh, iPhone, iPhone Retina, iPad, and iPad Retina. Here, uh, Retina Pro is basically telling us that there are some folders that it requires to manage atlases and textures. So we're just going to go ahead and create those folders. So let's add our devices. Um, oops, it does not really matter what you call these, they just need to be readable and so that you understand them. Um, we're going to do landscape. So that is uh, 480 by 320. And then we'll do the retina version. And we'll set the pixel size to half for this one. Um, so that's 960 by uh, 640. And we'll do the iPad. 1024 by 768 and lastly iPad Retina which is 2048 by uh, 1536 Oops. so uh, there's our four devices now what we need to do is uh, set up our atlases okay let's bring up the atlas window and we'll add an atlas. This, these folders um, are required to uh, store your art files in for each device type. This button allows you to just very easily create those. If you require pixel perfect uh, buttons and or widgets, um, I recommend leaving the filtering at point and uh, the format of the texture to true color for the highest quality. So the next thing we will do is create 
these textures. Just to show you here, in the project view, we have the hierarchy uh, for each device type and then the actual atlas that we just created. Um, right now, there's no art files here. Okay, so let's uh, generate the art files. So here is a script that um, I mentioned earlier. Um, it should be pointed out that this script is not part of the Retina Pro package. I guess if enough people uh, would like me to upload this somewhere, I, I'll do that. Just, uh, I guess, contact me at the support email address. So the first thing I'm going to do is run the script. And what it basically does is takes all the iPad uh, Photoshop documents and scales them down for the different uh, device screen resolutions. OK, so if we come back over to Unity, I'll, I can now see that each folder, there's one for iPad, one for uh, iPad Retina, iPhone, and iPhone Retina. So all of the uh, textures are in place now. The uh, advantage with Retina Pro is you can essentially manage the atlases working with the file system or uh, Unity's uh, project browser. So let's uh, go back to the atlas. The, the atlas. the atlas that we added was really an atlas definition for Retina Pro. We haven't actually created NGUI's atlas yet. So now that the files are in place, we're no longer getting the errors for missing art files. So we can go ahead now and create the atlas. This takes a little while to build the atlases. Okay, so that's the atlas is built. Under uh, the resource folder, if we open that up, we'll see the Retina Pro atlases. And we have uh, the actual atlas reference, which points to the uh, atlas, the device specific atlas. Under each folder here, we have the atlas for that device. So we can see its texture, the actual atlas itself and the material. If we look at the texture, we can see that the filter mode is set to point. And that was, that's also in the um, Retina Pro atlas definition. You can see their point. Same for format and padding. Padding is used when it creates the atlas it creates a space between the different parts, the elements that go in the atlas. OK, so we have our uh, atlases uh, ready to go. So the, the most important thing is that when you now build a widget, you point to this atlas. That's important because uh, the atlas reference allows NGUI to at runtime dynamically use a, a different atlas. So we're essentially swapping out which atlas is used at runtime. OK, let's go ahead and set up an NGUI uh, UI. So the first thing we're going to do is um, create the UI root. Um, we'll leave that at default and create the UI. So we have the standard UI root set up and a panel. So let's uh, add a button widget. So it's critical that here we use the parent atlas. So it's this one here. Um, that's the only one that's going to swap dynamically at runtime. If if this was chosen, the the button would be stuck pointing to iPhone Retina assets. So it's this one. Uh, we'll do an image button. 
will set up the normal and hover states and press state. So we'll add that to the panel. And oh, I'll delete this camera. Okay, so we have the button on our screen. And we can hit play. And the button works as expected. So right now, if I change the resolution, the, for example, say iPhone, um, and we look, let's look at the Atlas used. We're still pointing at iPhone Retina. Now, the reason for that is we have not set up a script that Retina Pro uses. So let's uh, create an empty game object and add that script. It's called Retina Pro Atlas Controller. So let's drag and drop that onto the game object. What this script does is looks at the screen dimensions and chooses the closest matching device that is set up in Retina Pro's device panel. So in this case, it's going to perfectly match the iPhone uh, non-retina screen. So let's run this again. And let's look at our uh, Atlas. So we can see here that the Atlas main menu has now been successfully switched to the iPhone version of the Atlas. Uh, let's do one other example, uh, this time a, a sprite widget. So we'll open the uh, widget wizard. Um, we're still pointing to our parent atlas. Um, we'll set up a sprite. And we'll add it to our panel. Let's uh, move that up a little. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, try this. We'll set this to 480 by 320. And we'll run and let's look at the Atlas main menu. We'll switch to iPhone. Sprite logo is pointing to Atlas main menu, which is pointing to the iPhone version. The other uh, tool which we haven't covered yet is the Retina Pro preview tool. And let me dock this down here. This uh, simply allows you to switch the atlases to a specific device. So to give you an example, if you were trying to preview an editor without running the application, let's change the iPad and we can switch this to iPad here. And it refreshes the atlases and our atlas is now pointing to atlas main menu iPad. Okay, so we've set up um, two example cases, uh, a button and a sprite. And let's just say that, you know, we want to change what the button looks like. So I have the button loaded in Photoshop. And uh, let's just turn on this color overlay, which will turn the button blue. So I'm going to save that back out. and um, reprocess the uh, artwork to bring it back into uh, Unity. And if I look uh, at project files and the textures, we can see that our button is now blue for all of the different devices. So the, the real uh, strength of Retina Pro is that when you update artwork, it is very easy to get it back into the Atlas. You don't have to worry about managing NGUI's atlases or anything like that. 
So let's bring up the Retina Pro Atlases window. And there's this button called Refresh, so let's hit that button. So what's that, what that's done is essentially recreated the atlases pointing to our new updated art files. So let's just verify that. Um, under resources, let's look at the iPad atlas. And you can see that the, the normal up state of the button is blue. The, the press state is still that version. Um, let's look at the iPad retina and iPhone and iPhone Retina. So let's run the, the test app. And we can see that our button is blue and when we click on it, it changes to the press state. Okay, we've reached the end of this video. Uh, I've covered all the setup and basic operation. Uh, please do read the included readme text file uh, that covers some advanced topics and how to handle uh, colliders on buttons. Uh, I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.